Hello everybody, Fallen Princess here, back with another video for you guys with my guest star Salem the cat currently sleeping on my lap. Uh, today we have a story that's a little bit less fun, a little bit more horrifying. It's my personal Lolita horror story and it has nothing to do with the public and going out and having reactions and having people holler at you. It's more of a household horror story. <laughs> You guys remember uh, in a past video where I labeled like my top 10 things that I hate about Lolita, I spoke about disgusting rank clothing. I'll link the video up here for you guys to see if you want to see it. Uh, but I got kind of next leveled on that because we found out that we were dealing with a clothes moth infestation. Clothes moths actually come into your home via used clothing items. So uh, stuff that you buy from Goodwill or Closet Child or any other person that you might be buying from off a of lace market, it could be anything. And if an infested item comes into your home and it's not like right away either steamed, dry cleaned, or uh, put into the machine to wash on a warm cycle, then you're pretty much screwed because they will just reproduce. You might ask yourself, well, how do you even know you have an infestation? Like, shouldn't this be totally obvious if there's a bunch of critters on your clothing? Actually, you probably wouldn't. Uh, the eggs are burrowed into the fabric of your of the clothes, so you can't actually see them by the naked eye. They're like a millimeter in, in, in diameter. You'll only see them once they get into the cocoon stage, which is about one to two centimeters in length and really, really small. The actual moss are also very small. It's like one to two centimeters, really, really tiny. The reason that I found out that we had them was that uh, at night in the basement, like once every couple of days, I would see a moth flying around and I started asking myself like are they coming in through a window are they coming in from yard work and us opening and closing the doors like what's the deal after doing a bit of research on why do I have moss in my house I found out that clothes moss were a thing clothes moss are moss that eat clothes let that sink in for you guys this is some pretty terrifying right there I'm sorry we'll have to bleep that out I don't care they ruined my life for two months and I will tell you how we got rid of them. But it is a horrifying tale of woe. Uh, and essentially, oh They don't go out in the sun. They will not go out, you know, when it's, when there's light in the wardrobe, they won't go out in the day. The only way that you'll notice is if there's males flying around and it will be like in your basement or attic or really a not so well lit area of the house because they don't congregate where the, there's a lot of light. Uh, they are completely fearful of that. So it's really hard to determine how, you know, if you do have an infestation. And the way that I found out was moss appearing near like a, like light sources in our basement, which is quite dark at night. Um, and that's how I noticed because I was like, okay, I'm seeing these every couple of days. Where are they coming from? Is it because we're doing uh, yard work? Is it because, you know, we had a window that's not well sealed off? Like, what's the deal here? After doing some research, I found out that they are one of two kinds of moss. Yes, because there's two kinds of these horrifying creatures that eat your frills. Uh, I will get to that and you'll see I don't like them very much. So the first type of moth is what we call the common webbing clothes moth. It's going to be in a tan or golden color uh, and you can tell that it was around because you'll see silken webbing. It really looks like just a, a little bit of silken lint. lint that's whitish in color, that's going to be inside the creases, like under the collars of your dresses or under the rolled up sleeves. Because once again, they don't go where the sun shines. So they will be under layers of frills, between pin tucks, under the collars of clothing, under the sleeves of clothing. That's where you're gonna find it. Or inside, like if you've got like a, a like a double layer of some kind within your clothes, they might be in that as well. And that's where you're gonna find uh, a little bit of webbing. Uh, they are super tiny and they differentiate themselves from the second type because the second type leaves a much clearer trademark. The second type of clothes moth is a case making moth. So just like the name implies, they essentially drag a case, like they eat through things and then they will drag a little cocoon type thing behind them, which is gonna be which, which is going to be a different color depending on what type of fabric and what the color was that they ate. Um, and those will be left lying around like it's really distinctive. So they're a lot easier to, to spot. And the uh, color of the moth is more of a brownish color here. Uh, I didn't have firsthand experience with these types of critters because I got the first type. The first type is a lot more common. A lot of the traps that you're going to find around are going to be for this specific type of clothes moths. But they both suck. 
So if I just made you very fearful for your frills, you might want to say, okay, but how do I identify them? Like, what do they like to eat? Like, what's up with that? So the stuff that they like to eat isn't everything across the board. Uh, they'll uh, eat natural fibers more so than the synthetic fibers. So your moitié polyester will most likely be safe. Uh, the only exception is they will eat synthetic fibers if there's anything that they consider to be food or food stuff related on it. So it could be like, um, but for them, food can be as uh, simple as cat fur, dog fur, hamster fur, feathers. Like it, it really can be any type of animal uh, product because they eat the keratin out of it. If there's actual food stains or sweat or anything like that, and that's where, you know, shout out to all the people that sell really disgusting clothing because that's totally food for moths. Um, those types of things will uh, get attacked. Furthermore, uh, even if you seal away uh, all your clothing, with, which by the way, we did for two whopping months while we were getting rid of every single one of them in our house because I was so paranoid, they will eat your furniture. They'll eat your leather couch. They'll eat your, uh, you know, your, any type of furniture actually but once again more so the natural fibers and th synthetic fibers uh, but anything that has like velvet anything like that that's totally food to them so you even have to you know really be careful around your furniture uh, and the way to find it is really taking a look at the details and undersides of things so if you're looking at furniture you have to lift the furniture because sometimes they'll have cocoons under it you have to look behind furniture move your shelves we even found stuff in, uh, in in cat fur that was trapped under shelves so we had to empty the shelves move them remove the cat fur like this whole process uh, and it was really, really lengthy and hard. But really the uh, fibers that they like to eat most are furs, feathers, wool, cotton, anything along that line. I have found that they like velvet and velveteen as well. Um, the good news is my actual Lolita dresses seem to be unscathed. I can't say the same thing about my hats, which did have feathers on them. Um, but most of it was unscathed and that's just because as soon as I noticed the issue, I literally emptied out every single closet that we had in the house. Can you imagine? The process to getting rid of these critters was actually emptying out all the closets, like I just mentioned, and washing everything in vinegar. So like the insides of the closet, uh, vacuuming in the corners, washing every single piece of clothing that you had with a heat cycle or get things into a dry cleaners. For anything that you couldn't do either or or were too scared to do, steaming is a really good option. So literally every piece of furniture, every closet, every piece of clothing was, was completely cleaned. We sealed away everything in bins to make sure that they couldn't get in. I even sealed the lids with extra tape to just make sure they couldn't squeeze in because once again, they're about this big, they can get into anywhere. So I didn't want that to happen. And we dealt with an exterminator because this will not stand any clothes eating critters in her house, you hear? So uh, because of that, I, <laughs> I was really not very friendly to moss and we were lucky enough that after two treatments, uh, they all went away. But once again, we recleaned everything once uh, the two treatments were done uh, before hanging everything back up. It's important to note that they especially like to go in places where it's undisturbed out of season clothing. So if you have a closet that's full of your winter coats or woolen fabrics or anything like that, they are very attractive to moths as they are not easily disturbed. Uh, and also your head accessories or things like that or your socks that you might not be using all of them in a very frequent manner because you just use one for me and then let them sit. Those are also uh, at risk. So I even had to go through and really look between every single feather, every single bit of flower to make sure that none of my flowers had cocoons in them. So, and once again, everything was cleaned with vinegar. At this point, we can't even eat salt and vinegar chips anymore. Like we are so sick and tired of vinegar. That being said, two months out, no moss for over 30 days. Actually, it's been 40 days now. And the house hasn't, has never been cleaner. Um, and it doesn't smell like vinegar anymore, but we're very, very happy that this is over. We also sealed away every single plushie we had because those can also be food to them. So essentially everything had to be taken care of. And that's why I'm telling you this, not just to gross you out, because okay, you're probably going like, ew, but this can happen to legit everybody. Moss do not care if your clothes are arranged by color and brand. Moss do not care if you wash everything 
you know, whenever you can, they only care that they have an opening to go in. And if you have a massive wardrobe, it's easy to get spots in there where you don't frequently use the clothing that's pretty undisturbed. Um, and that can be an issue because that can be a weakness for them to get in. So it's very important that you just, once again, if you buy used clothing, wash it as soon as you can, as soon as you get it, shake the clothes as well because that can dislodge the eggs if you do find any traces of that you need to clean your furniture and your clothing vinegar kills eggs but and heat kills eggs but not much else like most uh products available will not work and by the way the pheromone traps we tried them we had moths a palooza and yet they didn't really work and to be honest by the time that you see one moth you've got hundreds because they hide in dark places so you need to disturb every single thing like we even had some picnic uh you know blankets that we used in summer and hadn't used because it was a pandemic right uh and uh they even got into that so nothing is safe you gotta seal everything off and make sure your clothes your furniture everything's okay and so to this day if there's a piece of fur that flies in the air myself and my spells will go like we're a bunch of cats because we're so afraid of seeing a darn moth but as I said, now close to 40 days free and everything's been cleaned, everything's okay. We are so happy, but please, please, please take this cautionary tale at heart. You don't know how dirty people were before this. So essentially what I'm saying is this is kind of how we felt about moths. <laughs> There's a couple of options that are offered to you if you do find a piece of clothing that's really infested. First thing, you can throw it out into the garbage. The second thing you can do if you really, really want to try to save it is you can freeze it in your freezer. Uh, you'll need to leave it for at least a week. Uh, the other option, and some people have done this, is to try to put it in the oven or uh, a heat cycle, but really the heat cycle might not get rid of everything. Some people actually try to put things into their oven. I wouldn't advise it. That being said, there are clothes ovens that are, um, that are available on the market, like the zap bug one, where it also works for bed bugs and all kinds of stuff. So you can put your clothes in there. Like if you've got loads of clothes and you can't treat them each individually, you can put a whole bunch of them in there and then just raise the temperature and it's made to be safe and to not literally make your clothes burst into flames. So that's also an important thing. Though that being said, I haven't tested that out with synthetic lace, which is very heat sensitive. So you can do that at your own risk. In regards to what we did, every single item that we have found that was infested was thrown out into the garbage. And there were costs associated with this whole treatment. Uh, so just, you know, the exterminator fees and whatnot and getting things, you know, sealed away and put into bins and sealing the bins and all the cleaning products and all that kind of stuff. It was about $2,000 Canadian after everything was said and done. Uh, we did this to save thousands and thousands of dollars of clothing and furniture, of course, because even our freaking leather couches were attacked. I'm just saying, like, I at this point, we were ready to do pretty much anything to get these critters out of the house. But really, it's, it, it's very important to ask yourself when you find an infested item, do I want to fight for this? Because if you don't manage to get rid of every single egg, which can be a hard thing to do, it could start the whole thing all over again. If you miss one female or one set of eggs, you're essentially done and the whole infestation thing is going to start over. Um, so you really need to be very thorough and very brutal when you do find anything. As I said, like I only had one hat that I literally have to throw out. Everything else that I found wasn't, uh, you know, nearly as uh, targeted or infested as that item. Um, but my spouse also lost a lot of clothing to this and we lost some plushies because they were just decorative um, from the basement, not here, thankfully. But it was still very much an ordeal to go through. So really, my horror story is feeling the fear of losing over 10 years of investment in a passion and hobby and frills. And the fear of invisible or semi-invisible creatures, that's how, almost how I felt when we were dealing with this, because it, you couldn't really see the issue, right? Um, had to dig to even find the issue. Um, the, the constant fear of having things fester in your home, like it just made me feel so gross. I'm a bit of a clean freak. Uh, so I was really uncomfortable with that. Uh, so I didn't sleep very much for the first week or so after we found out because I was busy cleaning every single inch of our home um, and uh, storing away our clothing. But all in all, we made it through. And if this happens, so can you. 
I didn't mean for that to rhyme. I apologize. That's not a joke. But really, like, you, you can get through this. But really, please, please, if you buy used clothing, especially if you don't know the seller, wash it as soon as you receive the package. I don't care if you think that you don't have enough black clothing or whatever color clothing to put it in the wash. Do it to save yourself from all of this because truth be told, at first we thought we knew where uh, the nexus of this whole infestation started. But once we started moving furniture and doing things, we found traces a little bit all over the place. And that's the thing, they will fly and go elsewhere and you won't see because it's in the dark and they will crawl and they will go under your furniture and behind your furniture and you, that's why it was such an ordeal to get through. So really to save yourself the headache, treat your clothing as soon as you get it, inspect everything that you already own because a lot of people have them. It's one of the most common household pests, but people don't realize because they, they just put stuff away into the attic, into the back of a drawer, and some pieces of clothing they, they have for years and never throw them out. Like you haven't been like whatever size in 10 years and you still keep the clothing. And because it's under, in the folds of the shirts, of the dresses, of the cardigans, because it's not front facing, you might not realize. Look at your clothing, investigate, protect your wardrobe, and you won't have to be me. So on that note, I hope that you guys will not ever deal with this because we were just so done with this and that you will be able to kind of keep having your frills and keep having your party and always, you know, have fun with your stuff and never have to deal with the stress. I hope that you're well, you're healthy, and you're gonna have an amazing day. Uh, if you wanna follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Elizabeth Fallen, please feel free to do so. And if you wanna help out on Patreon to help get this show on the road, feel free to do so as well. Uh, you're more than welcome to join the Baby Bat family, and I really hope that you're gonna spend an awesome week, an awesome month, and we will talk soon, guys, so take care. Bye.